of the Cork Genealogical Society, as all members will know, and she looks after our Facebook and Twitter profile on the internet. So she's kind of you know promoting the organisation out there. Um, now she's um, got family connect connections in Cork, Clare, and Dublin, and her one of her main interests is uh, Cork research. So that should be a very interesting talk that we're going to have from her uh, this evening. Um, when Anne is finished, I'd like to spend a little time talking about the notion of having a Zoom meeting at one stage. Now, um, a lot of people got very familiar with Zoom and Teams and various other applications during COVID. Uh, now, some people didn't, and possibly some people think uh, this is something very complicated and difficult, but it's very straightforward. And, and very uh, simple. And I think, you know, there is a possibility that later on in the autumn and possibly in the winter, that there could be other lockdowns, maybe not as severe as we have, but there may be a big reluctance on the part of a lot of members to actually come out to uh, a meeting. So um, it would be very beneficial to be able to do a meeting online. And um, what I um, was thinking of doing is we could kind of do it in stages. And um, maybe some people could get into it uh, more quickly than others. Now, that is, we, we now have uh, taken a subscription to Zoom, so we can have a dedicated site. Uh, you know, you can, you can communicate uh, through Zoom uh, free of charge, but it's much easier and you have more facilities um, if you, uh, you know, pay the annual subscription, which is something like 172 euro, and we've, we've paid that, and that will do for the year. Now, basically, what I would be proposing to do, and I'll talk about it a little more later, is um, to send out an email with the link for a Zoom meeting. And to put a Zoom meeting on, we'll say, uh, next Thursday. Now, it won't be an actual meeting, but just to give people an opportunity to log in. You know, you, 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 basically, all you do is you, you, you press the connection, and then you get a few instructions, and then you find yourself kind of looking at the screen with the other people there uh, as well, or some text on it. So I was going to send um, a text out to members um, later on in the week and it, it'll be just a, a Zoom meeting that you can log into and all it will say is you've reached your Zoom meeting, come back next week and uh, we'll have something a bit more elaborate. So, you know, that'll be just a little bit of practice. And then the following week, a fortnight from tonight, um, at, we'll say, court past eight, which would be the normal time for a meeting to start. Um, log in a little bit before that, and I'll do a short presentation uh, myself, and then we can have a discussion about it afterwards. And at that stage, we should be kind of used to uh, Zoom. Now, it's a great facility because if there was a lockdown, again, um, we could have a few meetings online, and it would be a great benefit to our overseas or other parts of the country membership uh, also. So, uh, anybody got something to say about that? Look, we think about it, and when Henry is finished, we can um, discuss it again for a little bit. So, I feel like I'm going for from Kim or East Park in an archaeological. Oh, yeah, I met you before, didn't I? Okay. I did, yeah. yeah. So, um, I want like just to say that, that we went, we were in Friday, like a bit of COVID, yeah. but with all curation. We went quite through the mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. it, it has limitations. It has. And that would have been the same thing as an offer, but then nothing happened. Exactly. Yeah. It's ideal for, for specific issues. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I recommend it. Yes, thanks very much for that. So, and we will do. Okay. Oh, yeah.
been going on <laughs> and where is it? Um, the, I've, I've been working um, online with our online community in Facebook and this has been an absolute godsend for, I'd say, 90% of the people that have been in contact with. It's been the fact that we could work on our family research and completely absorbed by it. I think it's been a saving grace and there has been a lot of energy around the uh, Facebook community. Um, I've been moving groups around to make it more effective and uh, I've also been taking on extra DNA groups. So for the record, I'd like to thank Louise uh, O'Connell and Tres who have been managing the DNA uh, for Cork um, and doing an excellent job. We've literally thousands of kits in the um, database now. Um, and that's one thing that's been moving very strongly, is that the, the DNA matching has been really uh, taking off. And uh, the things are, are, are sort of like um, binding down, if you like, keep them more confident with what they're doing and how they're matching. Um, and for the record, I now have the DNA uh, match for my Crawford family, which has been going to take 60 years to find them. <laughs> And um, they are in Detroit. So, um, and it's one line on one, it's one piece, um, one, one piece of DNA that we're all matching on. And it's through my great grandfather's brother, who had a daughter who married somebody in Devon, and those children went to Detroit. And the, the, fun, the even funny part about it is that this family are half. German and half Russian and one percent Irish and one percent Irish in my DNA. So um, you know, never say never. Just keep keep looking away. And I'm hoping that some of the, the information you're going to get tonight might just move you forward with those reports. So what's new? And I'm looking at core primary research in its widest sense. So you're looking for you know people in Detroit. Um, she's thrown to bits. She loves it to bits. I'll be in contact with her. Uh, so here we are. So first of all, um, the library. Now obviously with the library being shut um, and everything had to go online and the city had already started putting, doing, doing things with called past and present or i.e. their website which um, so I absolutely love that website and the sheer amount of information that was on it. Now that update got shelved and so it's not really moved much further on, in my opinion, from 2019. A lot of the links have gone, so they're making it more user-friendly for the general public. But the problem is that if we want to look for something else that knows in a particular document, we're going to have problems finding it. Um, they are working, uh, all the city directories have gone up, the county directories, and they are searchable. Now that's new, and that's really good and the maps as well. They've been working really hard on the maps. Uh, but for the, the stuff that I liked, like the marriage bonds lists and things like that, and growth white notes I couldn't find. Um, <coughs> growth white on the pedigrees for North Cork. And I had a, a complete, I had a like, panic attack when I saw they'd gone offline. Where was I going to get them from? So there are things that have disappeared, but the search engine is picking up stuff that's still on the website, but it's not linked. So if you go into the search box and I put a keyword in, you might something might pop up that you're looking for. Um, now the local studies say they're open Tuesday to Saturdays, but there is, it's only by appointment, so we can't pop up anymore. And uh, I haven't tried it out myself yet, so uh, if it's slightly different, then you'll find out if you go. So I'd say keep using the search box. If you need a map, that's the place to go and get one. The maps are really good. They, they've got loads of new maps up. Um, for the county, I spent the afternoon with Tony Harper doing the local history um, update, and that was brilliant. And then we got our free room around the, the library afterwards to find out what they've got and what they haven't. So, uh, the, so for, my, for my first opinion, I think the county library might be more useful at the moment for us. Um, they, again, their website's being remodelled and again it's becoming more user friendly so they're concentrating a lot on photographs and images at the moment. 
What they did put up during the lockdown was the Bandon Council Minutes. Now those may hold back in the city library or the work, but these are actually searchable as it's from 1834 to 2000. So if you've got if you've got anybody in Bandon or the Bandon area, it's definitely worth having a look. They're under they call digital archive. You might need to search for it. Uh, but that's, that turned up when I was having the birth around a while ago. Uh, we had a talk to the county librarian in the local studies and they said, yeah, come up, come, to, come up, but let us know that you're coming because we have a lot of material but we couldn't really search for it ourselves. So if, we're, if, if there's something that you might want to look for or something you might be interested in, if you ring them ahead and say, I'm looking for so-and-so, have you got anything? And then they'll say yes or no, and I'll come up next week and we'll give it to you. So it's you know it's, it's quite informal, but um, they have a, a very good search. Uh, apparently, the librarian so they do where, where it is, so they can find it for you. Now, big relief there for me in the reference section in our copy of Keep Gosh Line box set. The North Cathedral Records, which you probably know about, and the Grove White Notes in hardback on the shelf. So I'm a writer. Um, the local newspaper collection you will know about, and you will know that there is a set on microfiche, a microfilm, and they're, they're accessible. What they have bought is they bought the Irish News Archive, which is the website, and they bought from the past as well on subscription. So if you go into the, uh, any county library, not just um, Western Road, and uh, get onto the internal system with your library card, you can get into the Irish News Archive and have a good cook exam there and find that has <coughs> And the beauty of that is when you go into the library system, you can send yourself the material. Um, so if you find something that you like, you can post it to yourself and it's all free, you've got to pay for any downloading. So um, they're very happy to have research queries, and, um, uh, but probably don't, don't just drop in on them and say, have you got my great grandfather's will or anything, um, and expect to produce it straight away, just ring the head. So that's the story with the library. It's, um, I couldn't get into my library, and it was uh, very difficult because I rely on it so much. So to know that they kept going and they keep moving forward has been uh, it's really, it's a really important thing. Um, thought to know that they're, you know, they're back up and running again. So that's the library. Now then, this is the big story. Cork Archives. They kept going. They, <laughs> I think they actually got, got they got um, they got through part of their battle, I think. There were two, Brian and one of the other guys were in every day. They were, they were, and they still are in our offering um, lookups and research for people for a set amount. So if you needed any information, if you wrote to them and money was exchanged, they would send it to you digitally. So that was happening during lockdown. So they didn't stop. And as a consequence, there are a lot of stuff now available. So I, I'm not going into the 1920 stuff because there's such a lot at the moment. Uh, but what there is up, um, you can see is um, The, uh, the burning of cork legacy. These are all digital uh, online exhibitions that you can get into and have a look. Um, so that the 1921 is the one that went to last. And then you can see the list by the side. Uh, time Barry, that was going up just on lockdown. Um, and now there's 16 rises has been up for a while. So there's quite a bit there you can have a look at. Um, that's, that would have been normally in the archives on the wall for you to wander around. So they, what they've basically done is they've, they've done what they normally do, but probably online um, during, uh, during lockdown. So I would say have a look at that. I'd also recommend for 1920 to go down to the Public Museum and have a look at the Cork, um, the story of Cork during the Free State. Uh, occupation and have a look at that and have a look at my dad who's actually on the poster <laughs> the poster boy for the Court Free State um, uh, image so 
have a look at that, it's very interesting. There's a lot of material there that will be interesting to you if you've got something in the city. And a lot of material that's been lent by families um, that wouldn't normally have been seen. So for that, and have a look at the Enduring Legacy from uh, the uh, Cork Archives Digital, and that's online uh, for you to look at. So this is what's gone up, the new online digital collections that they've been working on during lockdown. And as you can see, um, there's a good selection there in this revolutionary period. Again, I'm trying to put the glasses on so I can look a bit closer. Um, records related to Michael Collins, um, Councillor Linda Roche, Diaries, um, that's good enough. And then what they've been doing is they've actually been putting up, if you can see it, they've been putting up the cemetery <coughs> registers online. So Rathcoon is up there, uh, Curry Kipan, uh, Bantry, Bantry Abbey, apparently that's very, very good. And then Sipping Post Cemetery Cork. They're online searchable. Okay? Um, but they also Douglas St Luke's has just been donated recently. That's available for you to look at in the in the archives, but it's not online yet. So if we were to look at St Finbars, how is it, how they put it up is their search engine is really, really strong. <coughs> so what I did was I searched my favourite court word, which is Sullivan, because that will catch anything anywhere. There's nowhere that there isn't a Sullivan. And um, what I found is there were 19 pages in my search there at Sullivan in the search box. And um, I've got my 19 pages here. And um, as you can see, it's not only called the Sullivan surname, it's called the address. So it's really sensitive. So any, anything that mentions Sullivan is going to come up in your results. And then what you do is you click on one of these here and then it takes you to the page and there's a record of the Barrett Register. So it's uh, really, really sensitive. Um, I don't know if there's anybody in there that you can find it. So I'd say um, have a look at the Barrett Records. It might even be worth looking at them, even if you think you'll find it somewhere else. Because there might be a cousin in those records um, or it be something that you know, should be somewhere else in the world. So have a look at them. There again, call the archives. They are free for you to search. You just need a bit of time and have a look. So those will be the ones that on the um, digital collections will be searchable like to the else, which is there at the same time. And as you can see with those as well, you've got your burial pots as well. So you can actually you know, go and have a look. So National Archives, National Library. Um, <coughs> They haven't done anything, there's a good reason why not, but what I did find on the National Archives was the Marriage Bonds Index. So I was a bit relieved there because I was using the one I put past and present. And the Marriage Bonds Index here is for all Ireland. So if you're looking for um, a groom and you don't know where you're taken off or you've got to find it, that's going to pick them up. So if they're not married in Cork, you'll be stuck normally. The marriage bonds index is up from 1623 to 1866 and genealogy.nationalarchives.ie. So, but go straight into that because I tried to navigate through nationalarchives.ie and it couldn't be took me a good few goes to actually find the genealogy page because they've got extra, um, extra web pages in between it now. So, go straight to genealogy. Anything that they do upload will go straight to that page. Anyway, so it's worth it just to put one thing up if you can. Um, the centenaries don't national archives. I, I was expecting it to be more on that because the decade of centenaries was going so strongly um, in 2019, but there's not, not very much on there at all. But you might find property losses that might be useful. Um, after the Civil War, everybody complained uh, for losses, property losses across the country, so if, uh, you know, if they've been damaged to their building or their livelihood, there were claims going in, and that again is fully searchable, uh, so you can go in and search by name or address, and you can find out what they asked for and what they got in the end, <laughs> and there's usually quite a mismatch between the two. So the committee was set up, and you wrote, put your claim into the committee, and then the committee decided what, whether your claim was worthwhile. 
and uh, then they would give you their results and how many you were you were to get. So that's worth looking at. Um, now the main reason why National Archives and National Library haven't put anything up is because the virtual treasury. You might probably know about this. Um, I, I had a go when it first opened but it crashed on me so I didn't look at it again. Um, but I've had a little play with it and I'm very happy with it. So the virtual treasury is the um, public record office um, called FIRE in 1922. And the records in the public record office were lost uh, to a certain extent, it was 40% lost and then 20 damaged or something. Anyway, they, basically the public record office records um, were not available. But the index had just been completed the previous year. So there was an up-to-date catalogue of what was in the record office. And that's been the basis for the virtual treasury. <coughs> so here we go. So the virtual treasury is um, technically a reconstruction of the public record office. And um, it is technically what they've done is they've rebuilt the office, the public record office, online on a massive website, I mean, absolutely massive this website. And they, they, re, they put the catalogue where it would have been in the original office, if you can work out. So there was certain, whichever shelf they were on, whichever level of the office they were on, they'd re that in the same location. So theoretically, you potter along in your, you know, in your virtual office, in your virtual self, along into the virtual public record office and you go upstairs and you go to the virtual table and you pick up the virtual file. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's too clunky. You, you'd be there, you'd be, especially with my go to signal, you know, you'd be, you'd be stranded quite quickly. What you do is you go straight to the search engine. You don't mess about. And what I did when I put call here, I thought I'll start and see, we'll see what we you know, what comes up. So what came up for me that I was interested in was the fact it actually the timeline, you can see the timeline there, here. And this tells you the amount of material at each time. So you can see the majority of the stuff is 19th, 20th century. Now it's being added to on a daily basis. Um, and it's being added to internationally. Um, so there's stuff going on, if you look this week, there could be something different next week. And what they're doing is they're putting place markers in. So, you know, I have a record for, um, you know, the, the Protestant Organ Society, I've got a record for that. Um, so I put my place marker in, you know, the children's, children's section, whatever. And then they put down where it's going to where, where, it, where it's kept and where it's held. And so the actual real document isn't being moved. What they're doing is digitising the real document and sending the digitised copy into the virtual treasury. So what will be you'll find is you find the collected boxes. I've got quite excited with stuff I've seen. And then when I clicked on it, there was something there, so I got responded. But when I was at what they were doing, they were actually filing uh, almost like you know if you're doing the filing system and just putting a name on the front of the file and say, I'll fill that up later. That's what they're doing. So here you are. So you could what I did was I went in by date. Um, you can't search by name because it's just, they can't fit, it's not that refined at all. So you can go in by keyword, location, or, you know, by children's records, or something really broad. I went in by court to see what I get, and this is what you end up with. So, <coughs> that's, just, that's just your timeline. I clicked in my timeline just to see what they got. There's a um, very amount of cheaper material in there. So, you know, uh, I was quite surprised. And they, again, this is going to be added to quite a lot. Uh, this, um, I think, probably you know, Northern Ireland archive, and they've got everything up that they, they belong to, because most of that's digitised anyway. So, most, I'd say most of their stuff's already up, if you're looking for Northern Ireland material. Um, Hugh are sifting it across, it's coming across. But there's a lot, of, I mean, there's, there's the Cornish, um, Cornish Archive Service set stuff up, and I'm like, oh, right. Um, there's material there, and Corn, the Cornish Archives will do you a lookup. Um, I think it's for the price of a stamp, and they'll give you the photocopy point and send it to you. So even if you can't get hold of it on the virtual treasury, you can ask them to do it for you, they'll send it across. 
you know, so it's, it's worth looking and thinking, um, you know, there are possibilities of going ahead with it even if it's not fully up yet. So, <coughs> that's your introduction. So this is what this, I got really excited this Right, so I went into the city, so I, I drove down into the city. And if you can see here, what I pulled up, of Roman Catholics of the above city and county to the House of Lords for Catholic Emancipation, County Cork, Ireland. Right. What, what is this is, and I, as you can see, there's a nice blank square here. So, you know, that, that's where, that's what we're getting, but it's not here yet. So I went a little bit cheeky and I put that in Google to see, and I got um, a parliamentary record from the British Parliament, parliamentary papers, and I found it. And what it is, is um, previous to Catholic emancipation, in about, I think it was 18, 1808, 1810, there was a big push to get um, emancipation in Ireland. So it's just for Ireland. And these are, Roman Catholics who are business people who, who were, you know, settled, who, were, who got a good livelihood, they're actually making a formal uh, declaration to the House of Lords to get them to reconsider um, the laws for Ireland. I found a couple of my lads on that. So I was really pleased because that confirmed they were Catholics. Mine my, my moved from, you know, you never registered, my lot are in it. So they've actually come out and said that they're actually Catholics, so I still was with them. Um, and what it is, if, if you look on here, um, where's the next one? Here, you get not only the one that you're looking for, you'll get other, other recommendations as well. And um, what I found was an identical petition going out from the Protestant community in Cork City saying, this is what, you know, this is what we think, we think, you know, that the, the, the you know, emancipation needs to happen. It's, it's affecting business, that's what it said. Um, you know, it's not selling business down the book. And what it also said was that a lot of other people would like to sign it, but they wanted to have uh, more information. That was it. And I thought that was such a, uh, you know, such a modern thought, you know, because we want information, we'll sign it for you. So they, they will get records here that recommend, so you see one, there will be other recommendations or other um, documents that are in the same list in the same bundle. So having done the city, I went into I thought about a county, I'll have a look at Cloyne because Cloyne's you know, Cloyne they've certainly got in Cloyne a bit. So what I found was, if you can see, um, down here a set of records here for Cloyne. So there's three up here that have been put in the system but haven't been unloaded. And what you've got here are the real thing here, they've all been uploaded. So what we've got is our have to be um, so you've got the menorah records, so, and then you've got the um, records of the Diocese of Cloyne, 1766, which is the census that the um, Church of Ireland did of Catholic census, 1766. And also a statement of account um, from the Protestant Church. So it looks like the Protestant the Church of Ireland records of Cloyne are up. And what you get is, you get a flip book. <coughs> and they're from the National Archives. And you've got your National Archives reference code here. And then that's the actual book that's been digitised. And it's a flip book. So you go in and you click on it and page after page after page. So again, it's a search engine. There might be a search engine on it, there might not. You might need to look at every page. Definitely worth looking at. Now, the other thing when I was searching for Cork was that the Church of Ireland parish registers that were held in the National Archives have also been put up and they're searchable. So I had a notice in the crew was up there, the crew of Church of Ireland. Now theoretically these books aren't available, but they're up now on the virtual treasury. So it might even be worth putting your parish in or you know your, your location and see what comes up. So that's the that's the 1766 religious census. Now, I have read that the other religious censuses in other areas in 1766 are up, but I haven't seen them, and it's only certain dioceses that actually have survived in, so it depends, it's a little bit of whether you get it or not. Um, the Northern Ireland ones, they're up on the anyway, so if you need any 
uh, any of these early sentences, they're on the program website and you can search by name. So it's a, it's a really quick way of doing it. Anyway, so have a look at the Merchant Treasury. Make sure you've got a signal, good strong signal, and you've got plenty of time because you do need to take your time through it. You're not going to get like ancestry hits from it, you know, and little foot, little leaves turning up anywhere. You've really got to work on it. <laughs> but it is, I mean, I had such a good breakthrough with mine, it really did. Um, it confirms, you know, two generations of my family, just not one document. So if that one document, it works for me, you can see how much other material will be available that you could work on. Now the Cinderella of my talk is here. Um, this went up just before the virtual treasury went up. And it's the Irish Archives Digital Resource and IR, IAR.ie. Now what it is, is a collaboration <coughs> of all the holders, anybody who's got any, any material, across the island of Ireland, and you opt in to it. And it opens, they opened, but I think it was to Waterford. <laughs> I think Waterford with archives were the first people in there, but I made them up, I thought somebody's, somebody's uh, still working. Um, in two, two archives went into it, and then gradually it snowballed. And what it is, is the archives upload their catalogue to this website and the catalogues the search book. So they're going up at a rate of knots now, there's an awful lot of material in there. And I, well, I went on yesterday just to have a quick look and all the mission houses and provincial houses for the missions, like the Jesuits, um, they've just put their catalogue on right now. So that's going to make a huge difference to if, if you've got family <coughs> that joined, you know, joined an order and got these commissions. Uh, that, that is going to be a real, real uh, game changer. So what it is, is the digital resource, again, search with Corp, so you can see what, the, what you've got there. Um, they are mainly, the, this page I thought it was mainly in Corp locations to help us. So you can see some are going to be in UCC Library, archives, mm -hmm. service. So again, UCC Library, um, they do an outreach, so you can get onto them and see what they can do for you. The beauty of it is you know what you're looking for, and you've actually got your reference here, which is, to me, catalog references are one that I was called Delma. And I say, you know which one I mean? So, you know, it's all this, <laughs> it's all this song, so in it. But you need to catalog reference. So, what you can do is then contact UCC Library, and, you know, I need to have a look at this catalog reference, this set of documents and make an appointment or, you know, a bit of they might photocopy for you. So you've got Cork City and County Archives there, you've got the um, UCC Library, and you've got up here, you've got the Royal uh, College of Physicians of Ireland. I was impressed that way too because they didn't move in house for a few years, so I was really impressed that I've just got their castle book. And um, what else have we got there? Out of the uh, future. Now that's actually, um, it came up as a, a Dublin result here. It's the Cork, uh, Cork Street Hospital. But you can see the Computing um, <coughs> Provincial Archives as well. Now, they had a huge presence in Cork City during the Civil War, massive presence. There's going to be a lot of material there of interest. Um, you know, secondary material. So even if you're, you're obviously visiting in the Computings, they could be talking about them, or they could be talking about what happened in that street, you know, during the war. Um, there's an awful lot of material in there. Two of the, two of the um, court computers, they kept diaries during the war here. Um, so, you know, the diaries are very useful. So, Jesuit missions are definitely up. I saw them yesterday. And again, the Jesuit archive kind of be massive. That's going to be 17th century onwards. You know, that's going to be huge. So have a look on that. Again, so search with a broad, broad brush. Um, I'd say not so much use a not so much use a location, but use something you're interested in, like the missions or in China or children and twelve uh, children societies or something. Something that broad, see what comes up. Um, then all these people are opting in, so they're going to be keen <coughs> to, to, to 
to make contact with them and to help them out. Right, this, you might have seen this on the, on the, on the telly. Um, Miguel Martin was very, very, uh, he, was, uh, he, he was presenting it to the world uh, on the news of the work of the weeks ago. This went up last month, it's the Manion Collection. Now, what it is, it's um, one of the guys, uh, he's actually, he was a the geography, um, head of geography in, in New Barland University, and he was in Norway. <coughs> he and his wife made, a, you look at this, a card catalogue, card system of every immigrant that they found coming into New Barland. And I've got the dates here, their dates are... Here we are. Um, the dates are 1750 to 1850, so it's quite it's a discrete um, set of information. So you can see it's going to be the very early settlers and then the first the first lot coming through after you know after the um, after the water war. So they, that's the first set. Now what it, you do is you search by surname. Um, I wouldn't go straight into first names unless you're really confident that you can find them. And again, I went into Sullivan, and if there are how many pages of Sullivan's there, it's a lot. Um, and you get what they found. So what information they were able to read from whatever source is on the um, on the database. So you've got you've got um, a you've got here you've got a first name, then you've got um, ages, you've got sex, you've got. Um, some you've only got like a first, you've only got one name with the name of female, and then some of them you've actually got a burial record, or you've got a baptism record. And then here, which I could have put on the screen, is the card index here. So you click on that, that's a live link, and it shows you what they've got in there. You know, it's a, it's a digital image of the card index. Now, what they've done is they've linked it into the OSI maps from 1840, 1837, 1840. So theoretically, if you get a hit of one of these um, individuals, they can take you to the location of where that information is found. So if you found if it's somebody, say, from um, Churchtown South, then they'll go, when you click on that link, you should get a map of Churchtown South, and if it quotes the, the um, town map, it'll give you the link to the town map. So, to me, it looks like it's people in your family looking backwards because they're recommending that you work with the um, tribal departments and the British population and the registers to, to find them. Now, we, we don't really believe in that anyway. I don't know whether there's a name interested in seeing whether they actually got land grants and stuff like that in your family. So, I've been interested in, in looking at the future of them. So, um, have a look to see what you think. It seems to be a lot of money gone into it. It's the Newfoundland government and the Irish government have been putting money into it. Um, but it's great to see a card index being used, you know, in, in this way. Um, now, family search. Um, what I would say to you, I did say at the beginning, was that I couldn't find anything to find my past, and I couldn't find anything in the system. So. All of a sudden, we're an awful lot better off financially. <laughs> There's nothing new. I couldn't find anything past 2021 on there. And I think what they're doing is they're putting all their money into the DNA, and they're really pushing, um, you know, the DNA side of it as ancestry flying for the DNA. They're doing stuff that I don't know how they're doing it. So uh, that's where the money's gone. Family search is working away quite happily, putting stuff up. Now, what I got quite excited about was this South American update, and I'm including Mexico in this one. Um, and you, you'd know from the court the links that we've got with South America, with Argentina, and with Mexico, that that's going to be really useful for us. So it's, it's um, baptism records, it's land records, uh, it's an awful, it's just basically they're uploading everything they can put their hands on. So that's going to be huge. I've got two younger sons who've turned up in my research and I have a clue where they've gone. I know that they've been mentioned, <laughs> you know, they've turned up, made their names there and got good faith. Um, I'm going to look at those South American ones to see if they've gone off somewhere and, you know, got themselves a job over the road. 
Um, the other one's just literally just gone up by the Dublin Moor House registers. And that's in the, the admissions and everything. The, the whole lot's gone. Just gone up onto family search. Now, one of the, the lads on, on um, Facebook said to me that he said, you've got to go in and you've got to look. It's not searchable by name yet. So you've actually got to go in and, and turn the pages. But he said there's enough lot of material in there. And what I think is important about that is you've got the Liverpool collection, connection with Dublin. So anybody who's coming off the Liverpool boat and um, they've got nowhere to stay for the night, they're going to go to the workhouse. So you might find people you know, working, coming back from England and going through Dublin workhouse and uh, again, back, back home to Cork. Uh, so that is definitely worth a look at, especially if you know roughly what page you're looking and then what the family search are doing is they're moving the school's registers collection, which is on Arthur Street, they're moving it over to family search. So it's just started, it's new. So you need that link and then keep your eye on it. Um, so that's going to be nice So that's more or less what I've come up with um, that I think is worth looking at. And as I say, none of it is going to cost you a penny, for the cost of your time and a bit of energy. Um, but there's, you know, there's been an incredible amount of that at the moment. And I would say that the, the real stars of the whole archives have done massive, um, massive work. Um, the one thing I forgot to say is there's been a lot of handing over of papers and estate papers and private papers to the National Archives recently, um, like one a week, you know, and the locks have gone over. I don't think that's going to actually be digitised now. I think that's probably going to stay as, you know, a uh, viewing person. So you keep your eye on the, on the catalogues in the National Archives, the sources catalogue, and see what's coming through, because they're also, they've got a catalogue all before they can put it up and make it available. Um, but if you know, if you're looking for a particular landowner, um, have, keep your eye on it. Uh, it's going to, there's a few game changes in there too, a couple of massive ones. So have a look for that. Um, so those are the, the links that I've used um, tonight. And I hope they're going to be useful for you. And good luck. Um, if I found my husband after 60 years, I think I'm back in the country. <laughs> um, I know what, what really, really exciting was the fact that the DNA matched all that, so there was no, no shenanigans and no flippers, <laughs> and no strangers in the, in the pack. Um, and I, I'll definitely track, track them right through, so you know, the, you can do it if you're looking for, for an anybody to put on. So that's it, thank you very much for listening and help me.